All right, here's the continuation of previous lecture. This is part two for graphs. And today we will talk about searching. That is depth first search, breadth first search, uh, how to deal with edge-weighted graphs, how to find the shortest path. And the last one is implemented using Dijkstra's algorithm. So searching. The question is uh, how to figure out if there are paths from node A to node B. I'm not asking whether I have adjacent vertex B for vertex A. It's not about the adjacency list, it's about the path itself. So the path, it's a collection of vertices that is formed from edges. Uh, let's say in order to get uh, from the first node to the seventh, the node seven, I should do this path like from one, two and seven like that. So I've created a class search uh, that is a kind of decoupling moment. I'm decoupling it from the details because the details can be different. I can do the breadth first search, the dike search algorithm or uh, the depth first search no matter. Uh, for all of that, all I need is the set of marked vertices. Why do I need that? That is because uh, I could have some loops inside my graph. Uh, it happens when I'm going through kind of one path, I could meet the vertex that was already mentioned before. Uh, in that case, I should uh, look, keep track of marked vertices. And the next one is the map of vertex to vertex, I call it as edge two. In fact, that is predecessors. Uh, what is predecessor? For example, the predecessor for two, it's one, for seven, it's two, for eight, it's three, and so on. I hope you've got an idea. And the next is the source vertex, because in graph, generally the graph, it's just a collection of vertices and with several edges inside. But where's my starting point? The starting point would be the source. So starting from source, I should create some path to each other vertex. For sure, if I have uh, that path there. And the next method is has pass two that accepts vertex V. And I just look at my marked set. Uh, if I have that inside my set, then I say true or false. The constructor, it just initialized the source. It's pretty simple. I give some memory for hash set and hash map. Uh, generally, the edge to this map uh, is filled in from outside um, using some other class. So that's why you won't see any place in here where I put some items inside edge two. But I've got uh, the method like pass to that returns me back the iterable vertex. In fact, this is linked list of vertices that forms that path. As I told you, the path is just a collection of vertices. Uh, let's say in order to get from vertex one to vertex seven, uh, that iterable that collection would be full of one to seven. So what do I do here is if I don't have any paths to V then return now because uh, this edge two starts from, from the end. And if I have no end, then it means that it wasn't mapped, it wasn't marked. So I don't have any path uh, to that vertex. In that case, I return null, which means that there's no pass at all to that vertex. And otherwise, I create the linked list and push all that vertices starting from the end uh, till it meets the source uh, one by one and return that list of vertices. <clears throat> so, uh, we return the path from vertex x0 to vertex xn, u to v, 
in form of collection of vertices in here. So traversing types, we've got depth first search and breadth first search, as we've mentioned before. So what is that? The DFS algorithm, it's when we start at specific vertex and explore as far as feasible along each branch before retracing our steps. That is called backtracking. So let's say if I start, I'll come again. If I start from one, then I go to two, then I go to six, then se seven, then three, eight, then four, then five. Cycles may exist in graphs and like trees. That's why a pass where the first and last vertices are the same. Uh, that's why I need to keep track of which vertices have been visited. That would be inside my marked set. Uh, the next is uh, to implement DFS algorithm, we need to use the stack data structure. Uh, that is used for implementing the backtracking. So example of DFS usage is puzzles or maybe mazes and so on. When you have only one solution, like whether you have uh, exit from the maze and so on. So here's the implementation part. The depths for search extends search. As I told you before, uh, I'm going to uh, fill in that edge to map from outside, from some other class. And here, this is exactly that class that I'm using for um, putting all that um, predecessors, all that edge to a map uh, one by one. What I do here, I took graph and I took the current. The current is source initially, and then the count plus plus and look at all the adjacency lists of current because uh, this is recursive method. I call this DFS again inside my for loop, which means that once I look at any of the adjacent, adjacent vertex, I say, mm, have I already had that vertex uh, before? If no, then I add that inside my edge too, as I told you, like V and current, uh, V would be my vertex and current is my predecessor. And then I call the DFS again. So it does for the, the next vertex, uh, the same and keep doing that. So that is how I'm taking this algorithm like one, two, six, then seven, then three, then eight. The next algorithm is breadth first search. This is like before going on to the vertices in the next level, we start at certain vertex and study all of its neighbors at current depths. So let's say that I'm in this depths. So all my neighbors are two, three, four, and five. Then I should go to two neighbors six and seven, then go to three, my neighbor is eight. So we, again, in here also, we must keep track of visited vertices uh, because we could have some loops. Yeah, in here, in this example, we don't have any loop, but let's say that this seven uh, was linked to this three or this three linked to seven, then there's no reason to look at seven from this from part three, because we've already seen that seven from two. Uh, in order to impl implement the breadth for search, we use Q data structure. Uh, the example of usage is maps like Yandex or Google Maps and so on. And it also might be mazes. Uh, let's look at the implementation. It's also another class that extends the search. Uh, I've got this constructor that accepts this graph that accepts the vertex as source. Uh, this is the starting point, if you remember, and we call this BFS graph source. Some of you may ask, what does that super mean? That super, it just uh, calls the super class constructor, the search method, uh, which says that, okay, this source is my 
starting point vertex. Uh, my marked is my new hash set, then the edge to it, the new hash map, just gives a memory, just creating some uh, empty map and set. So next is BFS. In here, we do the breadth first search traversal algorithm. Uh, for that, I should look at all my adjacency list. As you see that I add uh, the current vertex as marked, first of all, then I create the queue. And my queue is also in form of linked list, no matter. And then add the current to my queue and remove uh, the the last element from the queue. So my queue is empty now, but it's not the same for all the iterations because in here I add to my queue um, everything I had here, like for vertex vertex graph adjacency list V, then my queue would be full of uh, adjacent vertices uh, for my current. But then current is changed like uh, inside my queue, uh, I don't have any current there. Inside my queue, I've got adjacency lists, like adjacent vertices. And then I look at whether I had that before. And if no, then I again say marked at vertex, then add that uh, as edge two, that it would be my vertex and V, V it's my predecessor again. And the vertex is just the vertex. And then we go to while loop again and see like q dot remove. But when we do q remove, uh, we look at look, look here two three four five, and then when I add two, I should go to six and seven. When at three, then it's eight. And the results. So I'm creating the my graph. Uh, I hope you remember what is my graph. Yeah, you remember it's API. I'm also uh, giving you all the codes I have, uh, like in form of GitHub link. So I'm adding some edges there. So every of my vertex is in form of string. So my edge from Almaty to Astana, from Almaty to Shimkent, Shimkent Astana, Astana Kostanai, Shimkent Kozlarda. Now, I'm creating the depths for search and breadth for search, both uh, starting from Almaty, just saying that my source vertex would be Almaty, saying that this is my starting point, all right? And uh, outputting the path to Kozlarda. And in both cases, you see that the DFS, it won't look at uh, how short would be the path it would just go and find the uh, the first moment it finds like it goes deeper and deeper without going wider but bfs it looks at breadth so that's why it sees everything around and as you see that uh, the bfs gives us the shorter path uh, in here, like Almaty, then Shimkent, then Kozlarda. So I think that there's no need to uh, explain what is output path because it just uh, takes the search and then the search itself, it has path to. So if you remember uh, the search class, it has a path to method that returns you back the iterable of vertex. And then we just go over it and output all of that vertex and putting this symbol like arrow. Now let me explain how to deal with edge weighted graphs. An edge weighted graph is a graph model where we associate weights or costs with each edge. As you see here, the edge from I to F has cost 14, from A to C it's 9, from A to B it's 7, and so on. So that could give us some extra information about the path. Let's say we think like in order to get this A, the shortest path 
uh, for us would be AFE. But in fact, uh, the ICFE would be shorter because 14 plus 9 is 23, whereas 9 plus 2 plus 9 would be just 20. So that happens every time. And the example applications would be creating the route for Yandex Taxi, where the weight might represent the distance or approximate time, the average speed, or all of the above for that section of road. Generally, it just represents the cost. And what is cost for you? No matter. Maybe it's uh, amount of money uh, you should uh, collect for the truth and so on. Yeah, weight calculation is entirely up to the designer. So no one knows what is your cost and what you have as your weight. So it might be integer, sometimes it could be double, why not? And in this example, in this lecture example, uh, I have this edge with source and dest. So now we don't have any map uh, vertex to ver vertex with list of vertices as we had before. Now it would be the vertex to edge. But this is just my uh, implementation of this graph. Uh, so I'm going to implement edge weighted uh, graph. And here I've got the edge. So edge, the constructor of edge would take the source, the disk, and the weight. Initialize everything, every of that field. We also provide the getters and setters. And additionally, I think we should have something like uh, equals method. So in equals method, I won't assume to have weight. Because in this example, uh, remember guys, in this particular example, I'm not assuming to have parallel edges and self loops. Got it? All right, so let's go. The shortest path, uh, as I explained to you before, the shortest path is about finding the lowest cost way to get from one vertex to another. A path weight is the sum of the weights of that path edge. As we've calculated here, the, the sum of weights from A to E, having the path IFE would be 23, Having the pass A, B, C, F, E, that would be 7, 17, 19, and 28. Whereas A, C, F, E would give us only 20. Uh, I'm not talking about A, B, D, E. Yeah, because it's even worse, I guess so. Or A, B, D, C, E, F, E, and so on. So the shortest path from vertex A to vertex C in an edge-weighted D graph is a directed path from A to E with the property that no other such path has a lower weight. Um, additionally, I can say that actually we could have some other path with the same weight. But there's not that much big deal. The first thing you found, you can take it. So how to uh, find that shortest path? That is done using Dijkstra's algorithm. So Dijkstra's algorithm solves the single source shortest path problem in edge-weighted d-graphs with non-negative weights. So this is kind of a rule that your weight shouldn't be negative. For sure, we could have some graphs with negative weights but in that case, Dijkstra's algorithm won't work. The method keeps track of the current shortest distance between each node and the source node and updates these values whenever a shorter path is discovered. Uh, also, we can say about the Dijkstra's algorithm is that every time it looks at some vertex, it tags it as visited so that uh, next time it would look at some a node. Uh, some nodes are like completed. Uh, that is called resolved. Or we could have some unresolved nodes. So that's why we say visited and unvisited and so on. But we could change some values in here. I will explain that 
one by one. So let's uh, finish with the explanation. The method is repeated until the path contains all the nodes in the graph. Okay, and only graphs with positive weights can be used by Dijkstra's algorithm. This is because the weights of the edge must be added. As you see in here, like we should initialize a table of unknown distances. A is our starting node, so we add it to the visited set directly. B and C are adjacent to A, so we update their distance. And B currently has the shortest distance from A, so we visit it. So let's go one by one. I will explain it like uh, not that quick. All right, so this is our starting point. We just assume that the vertex A is our starting point. So that's why. Uh, first of all, we visualize the table, like having the distance and having the last node. Uh, this last node, it's something like path two. If you remember that uh, predecessors, so the distance from A to A would be zero. So that's why there's no need to calculate anything. We just put zero here and it won't have any last node there. The next one is <clears throat> the thing that A is our starting node so we add it to the visited set. So as I mentioned before, we have some visited set. That would be also hash set. I will show you the implementation part, so don't panic. The next B and C. So as you see that for A, we have two, two vertices, like B and C, and we put all that values, uh, like all that weights, uh, from A to B to get from A to B and from A to C. That is 0 0.5 and that is one. And the last node, like predecessor, is A for both of that. The next step, so B currently has the shortest distance. As you see that, we should find the shortest uh, distance between all the adjacent vertices, like, uh, which one to pick first? Should it be B or should it be C? For sure we should go to B because it has less weight, the minimum weight. And from the B, we would do all over again, like all the same. The next part, we see E is adjacent to B. As you see that E is our uh, finishing point. Uh, so we update its distance in our table saying like distance E equal to distance A to B, yeah, like distance to E, like it's not uh, distance from E, from B to E, but from A to E going through this path, it would be 4.5 because it's just the sum of that. And that's actually why we can't use the negative values for weights. And we put that predecessor like B. The next of all unvisited nodes, C has the shortest distance from A. So as you see that we've finished with the with the first branch that we've been from B to A. Now we go to C part because nothing else left there. And the C is assumed to be uh, the smallest node, like smallest unvisited node. That's why we go there. Uh, C has the shortest distance from A, so we visit C next. And we have already found a shorter path to E, as we see. So D is the only node that needs to be updated. So we see that 1 plus 4, it's 5. Actually, I could put that 5 in here, but it would be in case if this value would be bigger. Like, just imagine that here we have not 4.5, but 6. In that case, we would put five there and instead of B, we will put C. But for now it's five, so that's why we won't touch this B. And for D, it was nothing before, but now it's C. Actually, that nothing for distance, it's infinity. We will use integer dot max value or double dot max value, or maybe uh, integer dot positive uh, positive infinity, no matter, uh, for the value for distance that uh, that has no value. 
So we have already found the shorter path to E. So this is the only node that needs to be updated. As you see that we put two here because one plus one it's two and the last node is C. The predecessor is C. The next of all unvisited nodes, D has the shortest uh, distance from I. So we visit D next. F is adjacent to D. So we update distance and last node. As you see that we've got this F here, and that is just the sum from A to C, from C to D, and from D to F. One plus one plus one, that is three. So we put three here and say that the predecessor is D. Then we we haven't finished yet because of all unvisited nodes, F has the shortest distance from A. So we visit F, then E is adjacent to F, as you see, and the new path is shorter than the one we previously found. So what is our sum? One plus one plus one plus one, it's four. So that's why instead of 4.5 uh, that we had for E, if you remember, we had here 4.5 and the last node was B, but now we change that to be four and the last node is F. So some of you may ask like, okay, we have that last node but how to find the path? Starting from F, starting from the last node, we know that uh, our E is the finishing point. It's predecessor F. The F's predecessor is D. The D's predecessor is C. The predecessor of C is A. So we see the, uh, the path. A, C, uh, D, F, and then E. Well, this is the implementation part. Uh, for dexterous search, I also extend the search that we've previously had, but additionally, I added some sets and maps. The set would explain us uh, which unsettled nodes uh, we've got in REST. And next one is map vertex to double, that is kind of distances from vertex to uh, the vertex with its distance or weight, no matter. And weighted graph vertex graph, that, that graph comes from the constructor. I also use super because that is the rule for the search. I don't have any uh, default constructor for search. It needs that source to be placed there. And next is unsettled nodes is equal to hash set, the hash map, the graph, and then I call the Dijkstra's algorithm. So the Dijkstra's method, first of all, it uh, puts that source to the uh, distances and to the unsettled nodes. So the first time we see a node, it's unsettled. Then we are going to settle that. While unsettled nodes dot size more than zero, vertex node get vertex with minimum weight and send there the unsettled nodes. In here, get vertex with minimum weight it accepts some vertices and just looks at that vertices and finds the vertex with shortest distance, like the shortest distance for, for sure from source uh, till that place. And the shortest distance is just takes the distance. And if we have the distance in our map, it would return that value. Otherwise, it would return double dot max value as we've said before, or this could be integer dot max value if you got your weight as integer and so on. The next is uh, marked at note. So I'm adding this note that was minimum. Uh, as you see, like starting from I, we should find the minimum, like whether it's B or C. And since my uh, the path to B, uh, the weight is the smallest, then I will choose B first and then go to A. And once I finish, I go to C and so on. So I also say unsettled nodes dot remove node because uh, once I finished with that, I can uh, say that that node was settled. So next is I use another loop like vertex target uh, inside graph adjacency list node, the adjacency list for a particular node that I'm removing. 
because I actually uh, haven't finished yet with that node. So I should finish that only in here. I'm just saying if get shortest distance target is more than get shortest distance node plus get distance node target. Uh, in that case, I just say distances dot put target and get shortest distance node plus get distance node target. So only in case if this sum is less than the thing that I had, only in that case, I put that inside my distances and I also uh, add that inside my edge to target and node. And I say that unsettled nodes dot add target. So my target is my next unsettled node. And then I go all over again. My unsettled node is still not equal to zero. So I proceed that everything again and again. By the way, uh, this method get distance uh, from node to target, what it's doing, it just uh, takes the graph.getEdge node uh, the get edges method, I will show you uh, that in my GitHub, you can look at it. Uh, so that returns the edge vertex, uh, the list of edge vertex, enumerable edge vertex to be exact, I guess. Oh, it's variable. Yeah, I, I think it's a variable. No matter. The edge dot get this. So if you see that the edge could have the get dest method dot equals target, then I return its weight. Uh, actually, I should be 100% sure that I will have some edge that would have that target for this node. Uh, otherwise, I would say that it's runtime exception, but there's no way to have this error. So I just put it because uh, the Java program won't understand uh, that I'm doing this return inside my if. So what would happen if that uh, thing, that condition uh, will never be reached? In that case, just throw new runtime exception not found. Yep. Who knows? And the results. So weighted graph, string graph, and new weighted graph. So both of that is undirected, as you see. I'm directed, I send there a true. And I'm adding the same edges I've added before, like Almaty Astana, but for now I have some weights 2.1, 7.2, 7.9, and so on. But in here I have some uh, differences in these two code. In the first example, I have 7.9 for the uh, Shumkent and Astana. That edge takes 7.9 and in the second example Shimken to Astana takes 3.9. So now uh, I just wanted to create a path from Almaty to Kozlorda. As you see that the direct path would be Almaty, then Shimken, then from Shimken directly to Kozlorda. But that weight is how much? Almaty, Shimken, Seven point two uh, plus Shemkent Kozlarda five point four. So you just sum all that stuff. But in here I have Shemkent Astana is three point nine. So now you see that I can go from Almaty to Astana, then go from Astana to Shemkent. As you see that this is undirected graph. So having the the link from Shemkent to Astana it means that you got another link from Astana to Shemkent. Uh, with the same weight uh, in this case only for this example so that's why it finds another way to get there from Almaty to Kozlarda but with less weight like Almaty, Asana, Shemkent and Kozlarda so we do some rounding process and that is all for today so chapter 4 from Robert Sedgwick it is the same chapter that we had before but from Bergava, that's chapters from 6 to 8. So, good luck.